Okay, so hello everybody. Um, today on our uh, um, on our conference video conference, we had um, uh, we, we we discussed kind of an overview of different kinds of inference procedures we've had from chapter eight all the way up to chapter ten. Okay, um, and we had some uh, technical problems with people, you know, with, with uh, people's Wi-Fi and whatnot cutting in and out. So I thought what I'd do is I'd go ahead and I'd give an over a video overview here that really anybody can watch. Okay, so what we talked about was we talked about estimating, uh, oh, we talked about different kinds of inference, and really there's exactly two kinds that we have to worry about, okay? Number one, uh, the situations where you're supposed to estimate or find a value from a given situation, or the second one is you're going to be asked, you're going to be given some data, you know, relating to a particular stat scenario, and you're going to be asked, well, does this you know, is this sufficient evidence to that, that you know, that it, it, does this provide sufficient evidence about some certain conclusion that you're supposed to draw, right? So estimate or find a value. Is there, you know, does the data provide evidence to make a decision or draw a conclusion? Okay. All right. So the first one estimating involves. So those are the two kinds of things. The first one is going to is going to involve a confidence interval calculate in a confidence inter interval. So if it's clear that the problem that you're working on involves the first scenario, that means you're going to calculate a confidence interval. If it looks like, if it's clear that your uh, the scenario, the problem that you're trying to solve involves the second bit here, the uh, providing evidence, right, that's going to involve a significance test, right? So that's the first thing you think about. Am I supposed to do a confidence interval or am I supposed to do a significance test? Okay, well, okay, so let's say it's, you decide it's the first one. It's going to be a confidence interval. The next thing to think about is to think, well, what parameter am I actually supposed to estimate here? It's going to be, now in stats, it could be various things in the greater world of stats. But for our purposes, it's going to be the two main ones or the two big ones that are often used is a mean or a proportion. So you have to decide, okay, I'm going to do a confidence interval. Is it a confidence interval involving means or is it a confidence interval involving proportions? Okay, so then, okay, so let's say you decide it's a mean. Well, then you look, okay, is it, is, is it a mean, is it a scenario that involves one sample or two samples, right? Am I supposed to make an estimate of a mean about one sample and one population, or am I going to be comparing the means of two different, distinct, independent populations, right? If that's the, if it's the first one, and the first one includes, by the way, what we called paired data, although it's not limited to them, okay, um, you would go. You would then say, okay, I would look to see whether I know sigma or I don't know sigma. Now, for all the problems that we're going to have, and all the ones we did have, uh, it's going to be a sigma unknown or a small sample situation. Okay, so scenarios that involve a, me a confidence interval for a mean, a one sample mean, right, are almost certainly going to be what we're, you know, we're not going to know the st sigma, the standard deviation of the population. So that's going to be a one sample t interval. That's what you're going to calculate, right? So if you have to do the thing, you know, on a problem, you've got to name the test. And you'll say, okay, I'm going to do a one sample t interval for means. Right. Now, on the other hand, if you're comparing the means of two different populations independent of each other, then you're going to do probably, almost certainly, it's going to be with a sigma, the standard deviation of the population is unknown. And you're going to say, oh, I'm going to calculate a two sample t interval for means. Remember, it's the t because we use the standard error estimated from the sample. Right, the sample standard deviation instead of the z, which it involved knowing the standard deviation of the population. Okay, all right, good. So that's what you would do for means. Or let's say it was proportions. Let's say that you were supposed to estimate, a, a, you know, a calculate a confidence interval for a proportion. Again, you'd ask yourself, is it one sample or is it two sample? Right. Okay, if it's a one sample, then it's a lot easier. We don't have to think about whether or not we know the standard deviation. It's going to be a one sample z interval for proportions. 
is the inference procedure you would use, and that's what you would calculate. If there are two samples, that is, if you've got two independent populations that you're comparing, why, that's going to be the two-sample z-interval for proportions. And all of these are found on your calculators under tests, okay, under the, the, uh, on the stat menu and under tests, under the stat button and the tests menu, okay? So that's that. So keep in mind that it's really, they're not all totally different from each other. It's mean or proportion. It's one sample or two sample is what you're thinking about, okay? So that's confidence intervals. Now, on the other hand, what if you decide, oh, it sounds like they want me to do, I'm supposed to decide if there's enough evidence to, you know, draw a conclusion. So it sounds like I have to do a significance test. Well, then, here's what you'll think about. And it breaks down in kind of the same way that the confidence interval intervals did. It's either going to be a significance test about a mean or a significance test about a proportion. You're either going to have a one sample or a two sample, right? Okay, if it's a one sample, and remember that includes paired data, and this would be scenarios where you've got one single sample, but there's two different measurements that are made about one set of people or one set of individuals. That's since there's one sample, right, the sample data would involve finding the difference individually between for each individual in the sample between the two measurements okay anyway so that's the paired data really is a one sample situation although it's not the only one sample situation okay and again just like with uh confidence intervals we could either know sigma from the population or not and again it's going to be this one here Okay, where sigma is unknown, and in this case, or the sample is small, you're going to do a one-sample t-test for means, right? Instead of a t-interval, it's the one-sample t-test, okay? And then if it's two-sample, right, it's going to be a two-sample t-test where you're comparing two independent populations, and what, it, what that'll look like is you'll have one set of measurements on one independent sample and another set of measurements on another independent sample and you're supposed to compare them okay that would be the two sample and that would be the two sample t-test the t-test because we don't know sigma okay and again with proportions one sample versus two samples okay and it's a one sample z-test if you're supposed to you know make a decision about one set of data one sample or a two sample Z test for proportions is if you're comparing two different population proportions, two different population means, two different population proportions. Okay, now one more kind of one more word about this. Back to here, remember what the confidence interval will look like in general will be, you know. The point estimate, either a mean, either an X bar or a mean hat, or an X bar or a P hat, right? Plus or minus, if it's a sigma unknown, T star, plus or minus, whatever the standard error calculation is. And there's a standard error formula for one sample, and there's a standard error for two samples, right? Down here, it would be, the point estimate is equal to, and this is supposed to be a T, by the way. Okay, it would be Z star times the standard deviation. Well, actually, the standard error, I guess. But we're still using this, the 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 um, we're still using the standard error here because we're probably estimating it the population proportion from the sample. Right, we're using P hat instead of knowing P. But in this case, we're still going to use Z star. As the, as the critical value for the confidence level. And remember, if it's one sample, we'll use the standard error formula for one sample. And if it's two samples, we'll use the standard error for two samples. Okay? All right. Well, okay, back up here, back to significance tests. Okay, well, if it's a significance test, remember you're stating the hypotheses, the null and the alternate, and then you're calculating either a Z statistic, right, if it's a proportion, 
right? That's this one down here. And you're going to use the standard error formula again for either one sample or two sample, depending on the situation, okay? Um, or if it's a mean, you're going to probably going to be calculating the t-statistic because you won't know, again, you won't know sigma. So you'll be using a t, you'll be doing a t-test, and it'll be mu minus the null hypothesis over the standard error. And again, what ho is for the two will depend on whether it's one sample or two sample, and which formula you use, use here, the standard error formula, will depend on whether it's the one sample or the two sample standard error formulas, which are exactly the same formulas that we had for, um, that we use for confidence, interval, confidence intervals, okay? All right, very good. Okay, so I think that's enough of this. If you've got any further questions, there's going to be homework. Um, we had classwork and homework on relating where we, we, we're given a certain scenario, a certain inference scenario, you're supposed to determine which one of these various tests you would use, right? Would it be a one sample T interval for means, a two sample T interval for means? Will it be a one sample Z interval for proportions or a two sample Z interval for proportions? Will it be a one sample, uh, or I'm going to point right here, a one sample t test for means or a two sample t test for means? Will it be a one sample z test for proportions or a two sample z test for proportions? Okay, when you do the inference among, you know, when you're doing the plan part of it, you've actually got to state what test you're using and what, what inference procedure you're using. And then you actually then, you, you would, uh, uh, um, Having done that, you would state the confidence level or the critical, you know, the confidence level or the, uh, 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 the the critical level that you're interested in um, test that you're interested in testing, and then you would use in the do you would use the appropriate formulas. Also, don't forget to test the conditions three for each and every uh, uh, inference situation, and you've always got to do the four-step process, whether they tell you to do it or not. Okay, all right, very good. That is all. Until next time.